Ah, welcome. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yes, well, precisely how urgent is what I hope we'll determine here today. So now, we have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. All knowledge related to the technologies banned by the UC and the Freestar Collective after the Colony War resides in the archives, including the aforementioned Terramorph data you and Hadrian are after. I want to know what you, someone with less direct involvement in the Armistice, sees as the purpose behind granting said access. That's quite the leap, Captain. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, Terramorph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand, we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack. Seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask how many deaths the cabinet requires to act. Fifty? Fifty thousand? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Essene has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this Terramorph seem at all alarming to you? That is worth considering. This attack took place on an almost completely uninhabited world. The casualties were minimal as a result. But if there's another attack, will we be so lucky? Hmm. Yes, a fine point, Admiral. So then, Captain, Given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives? And that data may be the key to stopping untold suffering. Greater good is Colin. You gotta pick up. That. I hadn't thought of that, Captain. An excellent point indeed. The other powers would likely be much more inclined to work with us knowing that. Chief Diplomat. That... that point... is a good one. Very well, you have my agreement. The galaxy is lucky you were here today, Captain. You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... What was that? Attention. Attention. An incident has occurred. Facility lockdown engaged. Incident? Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs? More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. Huh? Holy, we need to move. There. 
There must be another explanation. The creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture later. Chief Sarkin, order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. Nearest anti Xeno squad, though, is off world. It's going to take a while to bring them in. Well, then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You two. We can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Cap. I'm right behind you. Let's get down there. Did they say there was an attack? How the hell do Terramorphs get into the city like that undetected? Whole building's on lockdown. W what did the hell is going on? You're free to come and go. They're not letting us leave. This is bad, isn't it? Did they say there was an attack? I don't want to die at work. Oh, I can't die at work. Did they say there was an attack? Don't worry about us. We're safe here. Thank you for what you did. We didn't... We didn't want to hurt them. The way those people were acting, I've seen this before. They were under the Terramorph's influence, weren't they? I... I don't know. They were down at the port and they just started... screaming. We would tried to restrain them, get them on the train to get them out of harm's way, but... But some of the other officers down there, we couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just started firing on us. People we knew. They went berserk. Fermonic projection. Some Terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're gonna need to be real careful with our fire and keep that EM weapon at the ready. I honestly was just wondering the same thing. But no, you don't need to worry about me. I've had a Terramorph try it on me before. I'm not susceptible. So we'll just have to make sure to watch out for each other down there. I'm not suggesting. It's documented behavior. The result of the projection, though, can vary wildly. Some folks just shrug it off. Others hallucinate. And some lose control altogether. They'll lash out at anyone around them. But still, be aware while they're doing it. Those cases, you'll either need to knock them out with EM fire, or free them by killing the Terramorph. Let's do it. Nat's unlocked. Please. Do what you can to help them. I'll survive. 
you get down to the spaceport. Go! You're needed elsewhere right now. You should get down to the spaceport on the double. We got company, I think. Remaining creatures locked down on the landing pad, but we're barely holding our perimeter. They said you've done this before, huh? Well, got one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I, I can't risk them taking over any more of my men. Put those things down and do it fast. We will hold them as best we can. You might be looking for some backup. You say the word, we're out there on your six. You two have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here. But we know how to handle pressure. Surviving a full-on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us. We're not afraid. But we'll stay here and hold the line if that's what you want. You're the experts. Your call. We're on the line.
wonder what Jacob would think of a co helping to save New Atlantis. Damn if I'm not proud of it, though. Waste not, need not. How can I be of service, Captain? If you feel it is necessary. It is impossible to read Barrett. He is neither a book nor a block of code. If you are asking for a summary of my observations on his behavior, I will provide one. Farewell. They weren't kidding about you, too. The universe put the right people in the right place. Hmm. Certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't want to think what would have happened if you two hadn't been here. Just glad we could rise to the occasion. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant. My people... They give everything for this city. How does... How does something like this even happen?
You're not the doctor. In the middle of something here. It... It moved so fast. Please. Ah, just leave me alone. I'm sorry. These people need me. What? What is it? Not now. Okay. You anti-Xeno squad? Well, you should be. You take care of those things? Thank God. And... Am I gonna be alright? What? What is it? You're cleared to head back up. Those people are getting treated now. Don't know what would have happened if you hadn't shown up when you did. Did you actually go down there and fight those things? They said it's over. That we can get back to work. Like I'm gonna get any work done today. Thank you, gentlemen. Let your people all know how much we owe them today. Yes, ma'am. Ah, there you are. I believe we have some things we should discuss. Those creatures killed UC citizens. They're not killing anymore. Captain? Hadrian? It would appear that the Cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. As well as... an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs... well, consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now... Today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. The Cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. The Cabinet wants progress and wants it quickly. You're already far more familiar with the situation than any diplomat would be. There's also no diplomat alive that can claim they helped keep a cadre of Terramorphs off the embassy doorsteps. The cabinet was unanimous. They want you. We do. In exchange, we're willing to fast track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, Will you help us? It has its perks. Only citizens can purchase property in the city. We also pay reduced prices on most goods and services across the UC. There's also a credit disbursement when you first join. Help get you on your feet. But above all, 
you'd become a dedicated part of the greatest faction in the galaxy. If you're willing to help us, we can open that door. I'm glad to hear it. Now, we of course won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We're dismissed. The next time terror morphs rear their ugly heads, I'm gonna go UC is going to be ready. Engineer Kulkarni. Start getting a plan together for that data. We're on the cutting edge of technology here. It's an exciting place to be. The loss of life, the damage to the spaceport, the costs of this attack are greater than I think we realize. You've done the you UC an incredible service, Captain. To prevent more attacks. Unfortunately, Understand? I believe this is only Losing the beginning. Losing anyone in the line of duty is a tragedy. These attacks, they can't happen again. I'll coordinate putting the data to good use with the Cabinet. We'll be ready to move as soon as you've got it. It's quite the conundrum you two have uncovered, but we'll get to the bottom of it. All you need to concern yourself with right now is collecting that data. Hey, Captain. Sergeant Yumi was looking for you. Sounds like he's got more work. Chief Yassin, these orders... a Vanguard Captain. You... Yes, sir. I'll make sure they get what they require. That must make you my Vanguard Captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassin's second-in-command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the Cabinet. Chief Yassin wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor. Accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency, and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice signatories. You see, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both, and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. No. Each is a strip of several million random numbers, generated on the fly, based on biometric keys kept by each of the ambassadors on their person at all times. They're impossible to create without those keys, and those keys stay with the ambassadors, meaning we're accessing nothing if we can't get them on our side. I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar, or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun? Ah, the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Well then, hope she's doing a good job. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. 
But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe, bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of Embassy life. And someone who very likely hates her guts. Yes. Many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over, but I can't make any promises. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassine wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Official line is that you're... T My suggestion is to act... She's also got a staff member that might be more... Ambassador Balmore's... A challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Well, these days, they're primarily considered a security threat. House Varun Zealots, a fundamentalist outshoot of the group that stayed behind when the rest retreated into seclusion, want nothing more than to send everyone not dedicated to their cause to the Great Serpent in the Sky. But that hasn't always been the case. After they ended the Serpent's Crusade about... 70 years back, House Faroon did take a real run at trying to normalize relations with the rest of the galaxy. It's why they have an embassy here in the first place, why they were included in the armistice negotiations. But then, without warning, they left, leaving behind, to our knowledge, just the ambassador and his duty under the armistice. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Of course. But there is... another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmore is actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare. But it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. Then you search the embassy for his biometric key, collect your code piece, and we'll go about notifying his next of kin, if we can ever find them. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. The embassy is still legally House Varun's sovereign territory, so we're not technically permitted inside. We've snuck in the occasional spy, of course, but the Ambassador has proven more evasive than you'd expect for a man of his age. But we're quite sure he hasn't left the city. The man stands out. The Varun delegation brought more than a few of their native flora with them when they set up in the Embassy. It seems those plants have been allowed to flourish. 
making it hard for us to verify what's Flora and what's Ambassador. I have no doubt. Now, the Embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here. This device should get you all the way down to the Embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the Ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the Embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Now, if you have additional questions, or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. Howdy! Excuse me? They said it's over. That we can get back to work. Like I'm going to get any work done today. Yes? Did you actually go down there and fight those things? They said it's over. That we can get back to work? <laughs> like I'm gonna get any work done today. Was it really Terramorphs? In the city? Was it really Terramorphs? In the city? Captain, congratulations on joining the ranks of the Vanguard. Keeping the skies safe out there? Enjoy your time in New Atlantis. that I need sign-off from the Interstellar Affairs office before I can set foot in there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's McCall anymore. No winners there, just orphans and mourners. <sighs> Fine. I'll begin the process. Wouldn't want to withhold a chance for more red tape from the great UC. Working at the embassies is always a nightmare, but you can't beat the pay rate. If you have an appointment, they'll check you at the door. They have mixers for expats at the embassy every now and then. Only place you can get some good old Aquila City beer. You are visitor? You're good. Proceed inside. Visitors are only allowed in the lobby, offices, or conference room. That means you. Always good to get back to Freestar soil, even if it is surrounded by New Atlantis.
Guests can make themselves comfortable in the lobby. Terramorphs? As in more than one? All that security and they still can't protect their own spaceport. The UC never fails to disappoint. I just wish I hadn't received the news from an SSNN broadcast. We have a strategic advantage to maintain, Mr. Long. Of course, ma'am. Uh, I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. That woman is an absolute... Oh, sorry. Oh, what? You're the Vanguard captain, right? You know, I was about to board the Nat to the spaceport when the alarm triggered. Sounds like I got real lucky. And like I've got you to thank for things not being a lot uglier. Doubt the Vanguard would have a lot of recruits if that were the job description. But I'll take your point. 
Uh, but look, they said you were coming here on official business. The ambassador likes to handle all that personally, even if she does have trained diplomats here to help her. And I don't want to get shipped back to Aquila City, so... You want to work with me? I... Why don't we talk somewhere uh, a bit more private? I could uh, really bend your ear when you got a moment. This building is Freestar Sovereign Territory. So in here, we're the law. You know, traveling with you has been something else. But the best part is when we're charting course for the next jump. I never feel at home planet side. How about you? Well, how non-committal of you. See, the people I don't get are the ones who never go anywhere. They stay in their own hometown, they just live and die there. There is a whole galaxy full of wonder and things you could never imagine. How can they be satisfied with one tiny sliver of it? I mean, right? I think everyone should at least get out once. Go someplace, meet people. Get out of your comfort zone so you can really see that the worlds are more than just little issues and bickering. There is a mess of ugly out there, but my god, there is grandeur too. That helps you understand how this crazy place fits together. I want to be the code that finds something deep out there. Solomon got us here in a big way. I'd like to discover something that moves people. Makes them feel just a bit of what I feel when I jump systems. Not knowing what's next. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's funny, as much as Jacob, my dad, cashes in on the family name, he's got no adventure in him. And I get it. It's dangerous, sometimes scary out there. But that's what exploration is. Going off the map and seeing if there truly be dragons. Not one drop. He's always been about making deals, keeping goods moving. Despite his many, many flaws, I think deep down, he is trying to do good for Aquila City. But if you're gonna be name dropping Solomon all the damn time, you should act a little more like him. I couldn't ask for better company. So you want me to work with you, but... No, I, I think that's a pretty safe assumption. And no other city should have to go through what happened here. So then, uh, what would you need from me? The code machine? Only the ambassador's cleared for in there. Sorry. Okay, uh... <clears throat> First, you need her bio key, and that thing doesn't leave her side. Better chance of splitting the atom with a spoon than me getting that from her. Her quarters... Huh. Well, that's doable. And you... And the UC will be providing me with what for my services? Oh, wait, I thought you were looking to hire me. Oh, 
I'm not taking a bribe. Really? Uh, okay, uh, you've got yourself a deal. Okay, so there's a utility corridor that leads to the ambassador's quarters, which you can access through the main conference room. Here, the key. Whatever you do, don't let the guard see you entering or exiting the utility section, or you're gonna be in serious hot water. I'll, uh, I'll keep an ear out for more instructions from the... Sorry. Everyone I'm sorry. Do you have an appointment? Ah, you're the one McIntyre called about. The eyewitness. She said you were at the spaceport. You have my thanks for what you did down there, truly. Saved many lives. Now, she also mentioned that, and maybe it was just a bad connection, that now the UC wants Terramorph data from the Armistice Archives, some of the most highly guarded information in the galaxy, in order to protect us all. I can only presume you're here to tell me I misheard her and that they didn't send you, local hero, to futilely beg on their behalf. Tell me I've got that right. Ambassador, I can't emphasize how important this is. And who might you... Oh, I recognize that face. You're a co, aren't you? Didn't you run away to help that little Explorers Club? Really? An Explorers Club? Ma'am, I've signed up to help my friend here, who's looking to stop a whole heap of needless pain and suffering. Imagine if this happened in Aquila City, or Neon. The results would be bad, or, let's be honest here, far, far worse. We owe it to our people to do something. It's a disturbing thought, Mr. Ko. And while it is my job to protect the people of the Collective, the way to do that, I believe, is clear. Let me be frank, Captain. The answer is no. That information is there because it is dangerous. I will not be the one responsible for its release. Now, why don't you quit wasting my time, and yours, and go. You're really gonna push this? All right, I will give you one chance. One! I'm listening. Hmm. The Coes do have a way with words. Imagine how it'd look if the next attack occurred in Freestar space. The warmongers of the UC will find a way to make it dangerous. You have my word. It's possible I might be letting my history cloud my judgment. Possibly. I suppose you're right. Our job and our responsibility. And those lives are in my hands. Well, Captain, you... you make some good points. But if I'm really granting you access, I'm gonna need the following concessions. Your access will be limited. You can only take out the items related to stopping these Terramorphs. The monitors will make sure of it. You go in once. You get everything you need on your trip, and never again. And all research done with the data will be monitored. If this data is being used to save the galaxy, the galaxy needs to be involved in the oversight. Freestar scientists will watch your people like hawks. So, do we have an agreement? Excellent. Follow me.
They tell me it should only take a moment. And there. Don't make me regret this, Captain. You can go on through. Exactly. It's like... like... When someone insults you, you want to just... beat the shit out of them, sometimes. Uh, but you don't. <laughs> well, not quite what I was thinking, but that's actually a great example, Marcus. The man in the story was cruel. Do you know why he was cruel? You must feel what he feels. Understand his pain. How's Faroon? Really don't know much about them. I think that's how they like it. Is this some sort of stunt gone wrong, or...? I mean, is it supposed to look like this? With Varun, you just never know.
holy hell happened here? It just gets weirder and weirder.
know about you. Happy to even out the load.
So, what seems punishment becomes providence. <laughs> A reminder we can never truly know the Great Serpent's designs for us. You have my thanks, and my apologies for the ordeal you just endured. Come, let us discuss.
Not the ideal introduction, I suppose, giving you a grand tour of the embassy via barely functioning intercoms. <laughs> I do greatly appreciate your persistence. I suspect the Venom Tree upstairs has worked itself into more systems than I'd realized. But then again, who could cage such a beauty? Tell me, though, what is it like outside? I heard the broadcast mentioning an attack, uh, then the embassy was struck with a power surge, and then... Silence. Has the rest of the city suffered quite so badly? Carmless spores, you have my word, but uh, hard to navigate. Hence why I was guiding you through the intercoms to restore the environmental controls. <laughs> and release me. It is the sap of the tree that gives it its... Well, <laughs> perhaps not a topic for this exact moment. But I must know of the rest of the city. Does it still stand? I take it you didn't have such an experience where you were then, hmm? Yes, the entire embassy was thrown into lockdown. Trapping me in my quarters, disabling the Venom Tree's filters, and arming the defenses. A disconcerting experience, to say the least. Was the rest? <sighs> Is that right, huh? I shall need to have these repairs seen to sooner rather than later. Now, it cannot solely be the Serpent's Grace that brought you here at such an opportune moment. You were sent by the UC. That much is obvious. Who else could just waltz through my door, hmm? And the broadcast spoke of terror morphs at the spaceport. A worrying occurrence, certainly, but coming here of all places, when all I could provide is some enthused cheerleading and... Ah, an archive code. So the UC requires information, then. On terror morphs, presumably, hmm? Do I see this all clearly? Yeah, the preservation of life stands as the very purpose of the Archives. Using its data to prevent more attacks... There is logic there. But, if I am to grant you access, I have a requirement. For years, House Varun has been known only as an agent of slaughter. We founded this embassy with hopes of shedding that legacy. With... little success. In exchange for my code, I require this. You must be the one who ensures it is used for good. Ensure House Varun's legacy is more than just carnage. The knowledge you ask for isn't evil. No knowledge is. It is we who bend it to evil ends. Oh, you must assure me this will be used to save lives, not endanger them. A fine counterexample, responsible for the deaths of millions on ancient Earth. And... Uh, fireworks? Absolutely capable of being put to violins, but not evil in itself. And here you are with a similar conundrum. I might be willing to support you if I knew I would not be tarnishing the legacy of House Varun by doing so. For whatever it's worth, Sam Co here. You got my word too. Well then, I shall not fear. Please, follow me. <sighs> Let's hope it still works. Let it be used for good. Will we all be so lucky next time the archives need to be accessed? Something to think on. The 
The affairs of House Varun are our own. They left. That is all there is to be said on the subject. House Varun committed itself to the armistice. This was said at the time to be the desire of the Great Serpent, and I do not believe the Serpent decides such things on a whim. So, when my brethren left, I remained, honoring the Serpent's will as I saw fit, as is the right of all his followers. It was tolerable, even pleasant, when my brethren were here in the embassy with me. We remade this place as best we could into a home we all would recognize. Our native flora, our iconography, our connection to the serpent, they came with us. With my brethren gone, it has been trying. But the great serpent has always provided me a path in my darkest moments. The great serpent is so much more than a god. It is fate itself. When our founder, Jinan Varun, left the United Colonies 140 years ago for distant stars, it was the Serpent that compelled him to found his now great house. The Serpent made us who we are today. Its voice speaks to us, shepherding us through the dark and infuses our lives with the meaning the universe so often fails to provide. Captain, I just received a couple messages from an operative in the embassy office. Did, did you actually succeed? With Radcliffe and Balmore. Was he alive? Did they both actually agree? You saved him. You Vanguard really do take that above and beyond thing seriously, don't you? Fine work. And now, I've already arranged everything with the archival monitors. 
When you get down there, the UC monitor will give you instructions on how to deploy the codes. Follow them to the letter. Here, the UC code piece and an archival access card. The entrance is just on the other side of the plaza across from Mast. Absolute best behavior down there, all right? Here on Vanguard business? Again, by the Freestar Collective's ragtag fleet, both sides decided the time had come to bring the colony war to an end. So the two parties came together to negotiate the terms of the armistice. The fleet sizes would be capped, mechs and xeno weapons outlawed, and all research related to those fields would be kept under lock and key in their own special archive which actually rests below our feet as we speak. And while these new restrictions transformed the settled systems overnight, entire economies were upended with the flick of a pen. They also marked the start of something critical, cooperation between the United States You got your clearances? Good. This is a shared Freestar UC territory, so act accordingly.
ever run into spacers? Scumbags and scavengers. They're like vultures, picking away at the leftovers of the colony war. You'll find them scouring through old labs and facilities, taking whatever's not nailed down. Hey. There you are. Captain? Deputy told me what went down. Impressive work. Captain, if you'd be willing to transfer the documents to the Major, she and I have been discussing what comes next. Time for us to start getting some real answers. And figure out if we've been asking the right questions. So whenever you're ready. You're carrying the most comprehensive collection of information on Terramorphs in the known universe. If we can't pry an answer out of there, it likely doesn't exist. Certainly doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but we're not going to know until Percival and I dig in, so whenever you're ready. I... Yes. It will be. Percival and I have done our damage. This... This is us starting to put some things right. So with the data out of the way, we've been discussing where exactly this work's getting done. The Red Devil's headquarters on Mars, back where you found Percival, seemed the natural spot. Already has the equipment, the safety measures. Though it sounded like the deputy had a few more things she needed to discuss with you first. Indeed. The most important of which is getting you your citizenship. Then I guess we'll see you on Mars. Captain? If you'll follow me. Yes? The number of lives this might save. This is headed straight to Mars. Join us there once you're done. All right, Captain. Are you ready to become a citizen of the United Colonies? It doesn't. We don't really care where else you might have been or might become a citizen. Once you earn your place in the United Colonies, it's yours. Well, only citizens can own property in New Atlantis. We also pay a discounted rate at any United Colony. And all citizens receive an ample credit disbursement upon joining. Good. This isn't the only item we need to discuss, so I'll give you the short version. Please raise your hand. Captain, through your actions today and in days past, you have earned your place among the United Colonies. Through service, bravery, strength, and upholding of the mutual good. Will you carry and cultivate these values for as long as you remain a citizen? Uh, then, Captain, I'm pleased to welcome you into the United Colonies as a full citizen. Here, your official ID and your citizenship dispensation. We've also let the Aphelion Realty Office out in the plaza know you're approved to purchase property. Now, the other item we needed to discuss. There's a member of the UC who's asked to speak to you, but this person is in a sensitive position. Normally, we wouldn't even consider something like this. But we think this person has information that could prove useful in dealing with the Terramorphs. And they've stated they'll only share it with you. They asked for you by name. So I need your agreement that everything you're about to see is kept in the strictest confidence. You can tell no one. Can you agree to these terms? 
I'm sorry. I can't share any more without your word. Do I have it? Let's hope it never comes to that. Head to the elevator. You're going to subsection 7. I'll make sure you're cleared for access by the time you get there. So this is where the UC hides all the scary shit they're doing. What I'd give to have all the rangers with me right now.
President Abeo was kind enough to give me a few files to peruse. Quite the series of accomplishments you've managed. But now you face a foe unlike any other. An invisible enemy, lurking in the shadows. You're going to need all the help you can get. Which is why I hoped we could speak. Do you know who I am? Perceptive. I like that. I'm Francois Sanon. But most know me as Vevictus. I was an admiral during the Colony War. One of its great villains, if you believe the slates. I was to be executed for my crimes. But the previous regime deemed me too valuable to simply discard. So they put me here. A sacrifice on the altar of peace. Even my death served the colonies. To warrant my execution. The official charges I faced after the war were twofold. The first was the destruction of civilian ships during the Battle of Cheyenne. A battle during which those civilian ships were actively attacking my fleet. The other was... Ordering the bombing of the Londinian spaceport to halt the spread of the Terramorph outbreak there. The city and its citizens were lost, but countless others likely saved. And for doing what was right, I was put on trial. And my life irrevocably changed. One final act of rebellion by the leadership that lost the colony war. The trial was authentic. I faced tribunal with dignity, but my execution staged. A lethal injection that was anything but. The cabinet at the time, long gone now, wished to keep me on as an advisor. And considering the other option, I was in no place to refuse. So I elected to trade my freedom for my continued existence. But such is the life of a soldier. Astute. That's my daughter. My progeny. You've been working alongside. Has she shared with you the nature of our little family? Uh, did she? So willing to trust Hadrian. I never did succeed in driving that out of her. Our relationship has always been a challenging one. The Major was born to become a great leader, carry on the legacy I established, and was given all the finest training to support it. And she excelled. But the universe cut all that short. Now, though, it's placed even more crucial work in front of the two of you. And I think I have a part to play in helping you accomplish what you've set out to do. It was an attempt by the United Colonies to solidify its own legacy. Forging a new generation of great leaders. They were raised by adoptive families made up of scholars and tacticians. Trained at the United Colonies' greatest scientific and military academies. Displayed incredible promise. But by the time the colony war came to a close, there was only Hadrian. But that's ancient history now. You have much more pressing matters at hand, with which I can help. After some long years earning the trust of this current regime, the UC has been permitting me to work alongside one of their recovery teams, helping them gather intelligence on, locate, and organize scenarios to lure in some of the criminals that evaded justice after the colony war. With quite a few successes, I might add. But in the process, I managed to find something else. The names and locations.
generations of Hadrian and Percival's old research team. Valuable manpower for the effort you're about to embark on. I'll tell you where they are, but in exchange, I need something dealt with. <laughs> well, who better to find them? But many of them I knew personally, and I've always had a mind for details. Where someone was born, next of kin, <laughs> you'd be shocked how often an otherwise brilliant criminal flees to the planet just next to the one where they were born, or where a family member resides. I simply use my own personal knowledge and the information. There is a former colleague of mine, a man by the name of Dr. Reginald Orlais. Like myself and Hadrian, he was involved in some of the United Colonies' more problematic lines of research. Mech weapons were his specialty. If it dealt death, he could make a deal more. When the colony war ended, he fled, refusing to face tribunal, and has continued to peddle his skills to the highest bidder to this day. But I finally found him. I want you to track him down and deal with him, however you're able. I'm not expecting he'll come quietly. Bring me evidence that the job's done, and I'll tell you what I know. Captain, your files indicate a track record of unlikely successes. It is my genuine hope that, perhaps down the line, you might become a part of our team. And this might be something of a tryout. Speak to Deputy McIntyre. I'm sure she'd be happy to hear that someone might be tying up this loose end at long last. Though I would ask you, do not make the mistake of confusing me for a simple cutthroat. You can certainly try, but the man's been out there 20 years. He's likely gone feral by now. Easier for all if you simply blow up his ship and be done with it. If that's what you require to sleep at night, so be it. According to my information, he's been hiding around the world of Etheria. Wolf system. There is a star station in the vicinity. The Den. The head of the local vanguard, one Captain Marquez, should be able to help you find our man.
You know, the way you handle things is not bad. Bye. Your click problem? Captain, did your, uh, meeting go well? I hope it's clear now why we needed you to agree to all the secrecy. Surprised me too when I learned it. But the, uh, prisoner has proven useful over the years. And kept far from any major decision-making. But I do think it's worth re-emphasizing. No one else can know about this. All right? The Major doesn't have clearance for this sort of information. And she certainly doesn't need a distraction from her current very important work. Which is why I need you to keep this to yourself. Good. Because bringing this up to the outside world would create the unfair appearance, Captain, that you're unhinged. And that's not a good look for any of us. Now, was there something in particular you needed to discuss about... what we were just discussing? Dr. Reginald Orlais? He's finally found him. Of course, killing Orlais is completely out of the question, but bringing him to justice... He's been on the lam for years. That'd be a huge win for the UC. What's being offered in return? Allowing you to kill someone on behalf of the prisoner? Absolutely not. But taking the chance to bring a known criminal to justice? Well... The old man's been right more than a few times in the past. So, what's been... Really? He found the members of the research team. We'd already initiated a search for them, but it'd save a lot of time and manpower if he just gave us that information. Captain, if that's the deal, you have my endorsement. Just so long as you make every effort to bring the man in alive. Now, was there anything else you wanted to discuss regarding your meeting? Trusting the man downstairs would be a mistake, but I don't think you need to be too concerned. This is far from the first name he's handed over, and all previous missions went off largely without a hitch. So while I'd certainly warrant caution, I think you can proceed. The Den? It's a star station. Orbiting Wolf, the second star station actually to bear that title. The first one was blown to smithereens by House Varun during the Serpent's Crusade. The place has always acted as a remote strategic hub, primarily for repairing and refueling UC milit- But because of its distance from the rest of the UC, things there have always been a little more lax. Patrols included. I can think of worse places in the galaxy for a criminal to hide out. Then I'll bid you good day, Captain, and remind you of the importance of discretion. <laughs>